Welcome back, True Believers, and all you Merry Marvelites, as well as all of you Spectacular Spidey fans, to another very interesting episode of Marvel's Avengers 101. So as we continue to draw even closer to the Marvel's Avengers online beta with each passing day, there has been quite the recent amount of information revealed about the game's beta, as well as the exclusive deal relating to Spider-Man only being playable for Marvel's Avengers on the PlayStation platform. And while the majority of the reviewers' impressions on the Marvel's Avengers beta are mixed, to say the least, I will be breaking down both the good and the bad aspects about the beta from reviewers in a separate video. But primarily for today's topic, I am going to be breaking down a recent article, which does include an official response from the head of Crystal Dynamics himself, Scott Amos, going over the exact reasons as to why Spider-Man himself is only exclusive for Marvel's Avengers directly on the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 consoles. Now, I personally gave my own two cents about this deal at the end of my previous video. But seeing that we now have an official statement from one of the main developers of Marvel's Avengers himself, I do find his statements to provide a lot of clarity on the entire situation. But to reiterate my previous claim, I don't see this particular deal between Marvel's Avengers and PlayStation to be anti-consumer in any way, shape, or form. The main deal that's been going on between Sony and the rights pertaining to Spider-Man has lasted for quite some time. And given this new exclusive deal relating to Marvel's Avengers, it's not really all that surprising when you stop and think about it. And to break down this whole deal between the two companies in a simple manner, Sony does in fact own the movie rights to Spider-Man as a character. Where even though that deal might be in a sometimes contentious agreement between Disney and Marvel, and while the company itself doesn't have the video game rights pertaining to that specific character, considering the fact that we also saw Spider-Man as a playable character within Ultimate Alliance 3, which was indeed a Nintendo Switch exclusive, PlayStation's built-in relationship with Marvel has thoroughly helped the publisher snag Spider-Man for its own unique use. Clearly like what we saw within Spider-Man PS4 developed by Insomniac Games, who now is currently owned as a first-party studio by Sony Interactive Entertainment. So even though Sony may not own Spider-Man's gaming rights directly, they are still fully able to utilize the partnerships that they are working with, like that of Marvel Games and Square Enix, to fully include the wall crawler in the PlayStation version of these games in order to play for their exclusive benefits. All I see this as is a massive business strategy for Sony to try and have players be incentivized when owning a PlayStation platform. And while that might just be my own personal viewpoint on the matter, it's still nice to receive a response from Crystal Dynamics themselves about the entirety of this deal. And as for where this news comes from, during a Monday meeting with a small group of media, Crystal Dynamics head Scott Amos was asked how the Spider-Man exclusivity announcement would affect any plans for cross-play or cross-progression between consoles for Marvel's Avengers. And in the future, he made sure to distinguish that one doesn't affect the other. And to quote Scott Amos directly, because of Sony's unique relationship with Marvel and PlayStation specifically, that gives us an affordance with Spider-Man that we wouldn't have otherwise. So that's something unique because of that relationship. But looking at the future, you know we have cross-gen. PS4 to PS5 will work, and Xbox to Xbox Series X will work, so cross-gen works. Looking at cross-play as a broader ecosystem is something we want to explore absolutely for the future. At the moment, we have no promises and we have no announcements, but it's saying, hey, this is a connected world we want everybody to play together where they can. So when we get to it, and assuming we get to that future, certainly we'll talk about crossplay then. But for the moment, it is two separate issues of saying one does not actually influence the other. We wanted this to be something specific because of the unique relationship and the great partnership between Sony and our collaboration with Marvel. That's awesome, and then looking at the future consoles and other announcements. We'll make them when it's time. So it has already been confirmed on Square Enix's website that indeed, no, Marvel's Avengers will not support crossplay of any kind. And while that will obviously not be a feature for Marvel's Avengers at launch, Scott is obviously prioritizing this to be a possibility down the line after the game releases post-launch. And as it was reiterated by Scott himself, Sony and Marvel do have a very special relationship with each other when it does come to the property of Spider-Man. Sony is obviously playing to their strong suits, and seeing how much exclusive content is going to be on the PlayStation version of Marvel's Avengers alone, including that of the character of Spider-Man as well as exclusive in-game events and cosmetics, this is surely going to engage gamers on a much more deeper level when deciding what exact console they should buy the game on. It's one of the main reasons why Spider-Man PS4 as a solo title is not only the highest selling superhero game of all time on one platform, but was also a major system seller for the PlayStation brand as a whole. And knowing that the exact same thing is most likely going to happen once Marvel's Avengers releases and includes Spider-Man as a post-launch hero on the PlayStation only, it just 
just goes to show that console exclusivity is indeed a big deal, and will surely make a massive impact to the overall market once the game does release. And alongside of that, we're already well aware that Marvel's Avengers has a lengthy roadmap in store for post-launch content. Crystal Dynamics themselves have already announced that the game will have a live service model that will continue to update and give more content to players after launch at no additional cost. Which was a point reiterated by Scott Amos during this interview, followed up by asking about some of the fan outcry and the feeling that players on other platforms are missing out on very important content. And to quote Scott once again, which I do find extremely important, so the beauty of Spider-Man and what Spider-Man represents as a character in this world is, again, it comes back to the relationship with PlayStation and Marvel. We happen to be ones who can execute and deliver when it comes down to choices of where and what Spider-Man can be. That's a relationship question that you know PlayStation absolutely has the right to. That, as you guys know, with Sony's movie rights ownership there, and Marvel with Sony saying, hey, this is something that we can do on this platform. And as creators, we have this opportunity that we can make something unique and fun and awesome. We love the idea of being able to bring this character to the PlayStation players. And so as far as everybody goes, dude, we just announced Hawkeye less than a week ago. We have two characters announced within a matter of five days. The future is bright. People will get fixated on one thing. As opposed to, you're going to have hundreds of hours of content in years of storylines coming ahead of us and new worlds and regions and new heroes and more stuff we haven't even announced yet. But I really do think people look at this and say, yeah, okay, we get that we understand the business behind that. But in general, we're making this game for everybody. We want this to be the place you get to play those superhero fantasies out with my Avengers team that'll continue growing with new characters. Characters you haven't even guessed yet that are gonna come to this roster down the road and new regions as well. So I am very excited for what the future holds for everybody on all platforms. And with that very last statement at the end, whether or not this means that Xbox and PC will see their own unique exclusive characters or content in the future is unknown as of right now. But still, there is quite a lot that hasn't been revealed yet in terms of the hero roster. And with only one more month away until the game launches, we will all still probably not know everything before that time comes. And to put all of this into perspective with a very simplistic quote, it's not personal, it's just business. PlayStation has clearly showed a massive interest within the Marvel property, and this also doesn't relate to just Spider-Man. We also saw this with the PlayStation exclusive virtual reality title of Marvel's Iron Man. Plus, this PlayStation partnership also ranges outside of the Marvel property entirely. Primarily with that of the Batman Arkham games, they also had exclusive content tailored to Batman Arkham Knight, Arkham Origins, Arkham City, and Arkham Asylum only on the PlayStation platform. And specifically with the case of Batman Arkham Asylum, you could only play as the Joker on the PlayStation 3 version of that game. But if you do want to look at it from the other side of things, this isn't the first time entire characters have been locked off to one version of the game on a specific console. And in the case of Marvel, this directly relates to Marvel Ultimate Alliance, where they had a plethora of extra characters only on the Xbox version of that game. And again, if the other major companies out there want to fight back against this PlayStation exclusive deal, then all they would need is their own unique Marvel character for Marvel's Avengers to be added with that specific console. But in the end, everyone, all I can say is that Sony is playing their cards right. And while I do completely understand why people are upset about this deal, I still think think all it comes down to is a matter of business. But still, I'd love nothing more than to hear all your thoughts about this news regardless. But before we end this video, I do want to highlight the slight chance that we could possibly receive a character trailer for Spider-Man in action in Marvel's Avengers tomorrow afternoon. And while nothing of the sort has been confirmed for Marvel's Avengers to appear during this event, I still think given the fact that this is indeed a Sony-related matter, then we could get a bit of an insight for fans as to what exactly the PlayStation deal is actually going to entail for Spider-Man in the game itself. And in case you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm directly referring to the upcoming PlayStation State of Play, which does occur tomorrow on August 6th. So this was indeed confirmed a few days ago from PlayStation themselves, saying that State of Play returns Thursday at 1pm Pacific. And as for what to expect, we have a focus on upcoming PS4 and PSVR games, a few quick check-ins on third-party and indie games from June's PS5 showcase, and sadly no big PlayStation 5 announcements. So 
even though I wouldn't expect anything related to Miles Morales showing up during this presentation, I could see them showcasing the hero reveal of Spider-Man to be featured in Marvel's Avengers. Just like Scott Amos said within the article, which I do find pretty weird, is that they did happen to announce both Hawkeye and Spider-Man essentially back-to-back -back within the span of a few days. Whereas Hawkeye was revealed in the latest War Table presentation, and Spider-Man was simply revealed in a PlayStation blog post. But knowing how massive of an announcement it was to simply confirm Spider-Man's existence within the realm of Marvel's Avengers, it makes me question exactly why they didn't showcase that news in the War Table presentation itself. And while you could say it was because they wanted to highlight more on Hawkeye's reveal, I personally think they might have been saving Spider-Man's reveal trailer to be featured during this upcoming state of play. And given the fact that PlayStation is obviously promoting the heck out of their partnership with Marvel's Avengers, I also think this would be a great place to further promote the online beta, which does occur this upcoming weekend, as well as potentially showcasing the reveal trailer of Spider-Man's character model within the Marvel's Avengers game universe. And if by some miracle that actually ends up happening, then you can bet your bottom dollar that I'll be reacting to it on my channel, as well as most likely be extremely hyped to see what Spidey looks like within this game's world. But until that time comes, everyone, that's the video I have for you today, and please let me know all your thoughts in the comments section down below. What do you think about Scott Amos' response to Spider-Man being an exclusive character for Marvel's Avengers on the PlayStation platform, and the reasoning that he gave behind it? Again, I do completely understand why other platform users would be upset by this news, but as a PlayStation owner myself, I couldn't be happier. And while I'm keeping my fingers crossed about the upcoming state of play for tomorrow, I wouldn't set my expectations all too high. But nonetheless, everyone, thank you all so much for watching, stay Merry Marvelites, and stay spectacular Spidey fans. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you did enjoy, and without further ado, peace out.